Today's lesson is about understanding a controlled experiment. A controlled experiment always has two groups. One group represents the unchanged or normal group called the control group. The other group is the one that you can mess around and do weird things to it just like an evil scientist. This group is called an experimental group. Now an example of a controlled scientific experiment would be, um, for example, testing the types of drinks on people uh, and to see how that affects their heart rate. Now a control group or a normal group would be those test subjects, those people that we would just give water to because water is our normal drink. And in our experimental group where we get a little funky and we give different things that um, isn't really considered normal for humans would be, for example, the red, the green, and the purple drink. So different color sodas um, would be a, a different type of group. We're going to call that experimental group. Now, whenever we have an experiment, there are things that we can change around in the experiment. So a variable is something that we can change. An independent variable in an experiment, one of the rules about that is that we can only pick one thing, one change to test in an experiment. So I can choose one thing to test. Now, in our scenario that we looked at a moment ago, uh, where we were looking at the different types of drinks and their effect on heart rate, what I could choose in this, I had full control over, was the type of drink. That's one thing that we're testing, type of drink. Now, the other kind of variable in the experiment, the other thing that can change in an experiment, is a dependent variable. Now, a dependent variable is what I'm going to measure in the experiment. And going back to our scenario here, um, remember independent variable, I chose type of drink, and the dependent variable for our scenario is one that I'm measuring. In this case, it would be heart rate. Now, whenever we collect data, we often in science want to make graphs of that data so that we can analyze the information. And so we need to know um, the parts of a graph. And we have the x-axis and the y-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal line that runs sideways on a graph. And the y-axis is the vertical line that runs straight up and down on a graph. Now, how do we know where the variables belong on a graph? Well, we have a trick that we can use to remember that, and it's called dry mix. Now, each one of those letters in that phrase, dry mix, stands for something, and it, and it tells us a really easy way to remember uh, where the variables belong on a graph. The D stands for dependent variable. Remember, that was the variable that we were measuring. Now another name, an older term for dependent variable is called a responding variable. So if you ever see that in a textbook, just know that they're talking about the dependent variable. And the dependent variable is going to be located on the y-axis. That Remember that's the line that goes straight up and down. So there's the D, dependent, R, responding. We're going to put that on the y-axis. Now the mix part. The M stands for an older term called a manipulated variable, and that just means the same thing as our I, which is the independent variable. Remember, the independent variable is the, the thing that I choose to change in an experiment, and that's going to be located on the x-axis. So there's our mix, M-I-X. So let's look at another scenario and see if we can determine what a graph might look like um, with our independent and dependent variables. So here's our scenario. If a slice of bread was placed in a light area and another slice was placed in a dark area, then the bread in the dark area would grow mold on it faster. So what are the variables in the scenario? Remember that the independent variable is the variable that I can choose in an experiment. And here's another trick. 
independent starts with the letter I. I can choose this in an experiment. And in this case, the independent variable is the amount of light that the bread is exposed to. Now, the dependent variable, um, this is the variable that I can measure in the experiment. Now, I can't choose this factor. I have no control over um, the amount of mold that will grow. So that, that's measure it. I have to measure that as the experiment um, goes forth. So the dependent variable in this scenario is going to be the amount of mold on the slices of the bread. So what would this graph look like? All right, so here's a um, graph. And remember that the x-axis is the sideways, horizontal line on the graph. And so that's at the bottom of your screen where it says amount of light. And I know that that's the right variable because remember, m, i, x, independent, the i, independent variables, that's the thing I can choose, is going to be on the x-axis. Now on the y-axis, the vertical straight up and down line, notice it says the amount of mold. Well, remember, the dependent variable is the thing that I'm measuring, and that's going to be located on the y-axis because I remember d, r, y. The dependent variable goes on the y-axis. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class for tomorrow.